Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, whatever time zone you're in, whatever time it is for you that you're watching this, this is the Wix Online meeting number 19, the last Thursday in February of 2014. Let's go ahead and get going. All right, the agenda, as Bob was mentioned before the meeting, we have a little bit more besides just triage. Um, one, we're going to talk about moving the GitHub a little bit more kind of uh, what we're thinking about there, things like that. Um, and then one review pull requests. Looks like we have Sean around, which is good because he has one of the pull requests we could talk about. Um, and then uh, we'll do anything that people might have questions, comments. Go ahead and as always toss those in the uh, comments area and we will discuss them in that phase. Um, as always, these meetings are recorded, so just be aware of that as we go along. All right, so first things first, let's go ahead and knock out triage. That is here. And there's my mouse. Ha ha, my mouse cursor is still here. Um, first one's first, I guess. Yep. Uh, this tension remains installed. Well, yeah, it would if you mark it permanent. Well, uh, yeah. Oh, uninstall is failing. No, then that's a different thing because they didn't give it the right ID. Yeah, we can't help a lot with that. Uh, this is not a bug anymore, right? Uh, you tell me. Um, I w it wasn't clear to me what the uh, if the right behavior was automatic quoting or something. If that's even feasible. Oh, that's interesting. I see. I didn't. I guess I never thought that you could have spaces in package IDs. Well, that sounds funky, doesn't it? Um, I just never even thought about it, because who would do that? Um, it's an ID. <laughs> yeah, okay. I suppose we could quote it. Seems like a reasonable thing to do in 3X. That would make it that much more slightly robust, so yeah. It's probably the thing to do in all this. I don't know if we want to keep this bug, though. We have to morph it a lot. Um, uh, that's a fair point. Yeah, do you mind I'll, open a new I'll, bug and refer to this one? I will do that. All right, let's do that. Text with transparent background does not work. It should work. I've used it. The font changes during does not install, but text will never clear and continues to draw on top of itself. Right. Because it's transparent. Yeah. Like, if they don't have not to have it do that, that'd be kind of cool. You'd be able to have a clear background as opposed to transparent background, right? This well, is. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> no, I know what you do. You snapshot the text behind. You, you snapshot the picture behind the text, and you draw that, and then you draw the text on top. No, I, I, background. I thought it was generous to give you a background brush. They're looking for a background glyph. Yes. This, I, this is annoying. I have no idea how to fix it. I don't even know if it's possible. Yeah, mm -hmm. very difficult not to use background image. No, you just change your background image, so wherever you put the text, you can put a right. solid color. That's what I did. Right. Um, you might toss that in the comment and and suggest that, hey, if they know how to make this possible in GDI, that sounds great, but as far as we know, it's <laughs> possible. Yep, that works. Burn bundle cache issue. Guess? Guess? All right. <laughs> guess we have a bundle set up. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll guess that. Package 1, package 2. We also have a patch bundle. Okay. Install package with only two, then install that. Patch one MSP will not get cached because the patch one is not present. Then run a modify operation, put that on there, then burn runs that, and that fails to install the patch because it wasn't cached because they didn't go and get it again. Well, I, my assumption is they were looking for patch one to be cached. Well, they can do that if that's what they want. From a separate bundle? Well, they'll get the option to cache it. So, I mean... Does that require a custom BA? It would probably require a custom BA. Okay. Um, we don't have a an attribute that you can say cache this always. I mean, that would be the only thing you could do. Uh, or the other thing you could do, I guess. 
but I don't think the entire bundle fails to do the modify because if the patch bundle it's an add-on bundle, and add-on bundles don't fail. So package one will get installed, but the patch may not get installed. Which means you have to then go run the patch right, right. by hand and do a repair or whatever you do to get it to run with UI, and then it will all work out. But, I mean, it's not ideal. I, I don't... We can't guess to know that we should cache patches. Um, a custom BA would be able to do the right thing. So this is at most a feature request for force cache. Right. Right. Or something to say, always cache. Force cache, always cache. Yeah, something like that. Um, but I don't think the entire bundle fails. That doesn't sound right. The entire patch.exe fails. That, I would believe. Um, so anyway, I don't know what to do with this bug necessarily. Unless we want to turn it into a tracking issue for the ability to cache packages for this type of scenario without writing a custom BA. Which, mm -hmm. Thoughts? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I guess I'm not clear. Well, no, I guess see, I this am, is not I correct. It did not, it did not refuse to cache the patch. It just didn't by default. Right, 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 right. Well, allow some florid prose for the for the bug. Um, Yeah, that's interesting. I don't know. I guess I I can if if I rephrase it in my head because I found I found this you know it it's a problem when you try to genericize your your bug report. Um, yeah, they're basically saying here, you know, I installed you know Bob Studio and then I installed Bob Studio SP one. And then I enabled the you know bar feature from Bob Studio, and it wasn't patched, and it should have been. It's like, well, yeah, you installed the service pack, and it didn't. You know, the the patch wasn't present. You installed the service pack, but the patch wasn't installed, quote unquote. And I know it's you know it's just a matter of whether it was cached. And generally, I'm in favor of the current caching behavior. You know, don't cache something you're not going to use. So I think a forced cache operation is, you know, kind of reasonable for that that scenario, that particular scenario of ensuring that your your patches are cached. I'm just trying to think about how other products do it. I think for well, the most part, the reason they, they work is source. well. The result? No, 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 no. I'm well. Yeah, but that wouldn't help you if you you know threw away your service pack exe. Yeah, um, you use somewhere you can get it. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm coming up blank. I mean, mostly I think most other products don't have individual patches quite like that. Um, well, and... Yeah. Or they, or they, you know, don't... They just always cache. Like you or they prompt. This. So, I mean... Uh, possibly. That's interesting. I don't know if the child bundle, or the add-on, or the patch bundle, sorry, the patch bundle in this case, the related bundle, knows the UI mode of the parent. I'm pretty sure the related bundles all get launched quiet. Yeah. So if they knew that they could show UI, but then see, they're not going to get the window handle. Oh, that's interesting. 
they're not going to be able to get it up on top of the right thing. I know that's actually really interesting. They sh I thought that was embedded. Isn't that what embedded meant? Yeah, I mean, you'll know you're an add-on. I don't know if you'll know that what the parent UI mode was, though. Okay. Well, sorry, I was trying to distinguish UI modes, although embedded is embedded in action or UI mode? Uh, anyway. No, no, no that, that's a, I don't know, it's been too long. Um, I have to go look. All right. Well, so I'm just thinking of the, the other alternatives. Like, look, I don't want to cache the patch because it's really freaking huge. You know, I don't want to catch cache patch one because it's really huge. But if they, you know, run package one, I want the option to go get patch one. AKA, I want to be able to resolve source for it. Oh, for sure. If, yeah, if that doesn't work, that's bad. So I think that's the... Well, yeah, but I don't know that you'd know whether you should or not, right? Because if you do a repair of pack of setup XE with in silent mode, then you know UI should not be popping up from the patch. Yeah, definitely. Well, sorry, I, I'm agreeing that that should be possible. Um, I'm I'm also suggesting that the uh, force cache concept is is legitimate too. All right. Well, those are two feature requests. Um, well, the related bundle not knowing the parent UI mode, that might be a bug. Okay. <laughs> um, probably wouldn't be that hard to implement. It might even be implemented right now. Um, but it might not. It might also be like, you're an add-on, don't show any UI. Um, now that would be breaking if we don't pass it now. <laughs> add-ons to start showing their UI and people would be like, whoa, what the? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah this, anyway. I, I, I can see where this is a, as a V4 feature. I think the force caching or the always caches can be 3x, but the second one has to be 4. Okay. All right. So we want to open two issues on that? I will open two issues on this. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're going to have a lot of work. Sorry. Well, I, I I get internet points for opening bugs, right? Internet points. I like that idea. You should have Wix badges or something. Oh, man. Build tab on properties window does not scroll all the way down. Oh. Okay. I assume this is... Oh, yeah. Motive. Yes. Uh, seems like that could be fixed in 3X. I agree. XC package X code stored as signed, but H results aren't signed. Into a negative, but burn tries to read the values D words. Oh. Yeah, so if you have something, say the Visual Studio bundle, mm -hmm. that returns H results for certain error conditions, we okay. can't actually detect that. Really? Uh, there's well. There's you can no put a really large. It. You can't put a really big D word in there and match the negative number. Nope. No. They're stored oh, as signed Fine. ints in the table. Uh, oh man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and the return code isn't. Oh, it's probably an int. Oh. Well, that kind of sucks. Yeah, you can the the exit code for process is a D word and Oh it is. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh it is but, a D word. But then but then their H result is getting converted to a D word that we're getting back, right? Yes. It's being converted to a D word outside of the range of assigned int. Oh, outside the range of assigned. But it's guaranteed to be bigger than two billion, right? Because it's an H result, it has the you know high order bit set. Yeah, but if you turn that into a D word, it just sets it makes the number F the top. I mean, basically, or whatever. <laughs> it sets the highest bit. 
Yeah. You can convert an int to a D word and not lose anything. Sorry. The, the, a thirty-two bit int. Right now, right now, the on the build side. Oh, on the build side. Well, on build side, it's stored as a signed int, right? So theoretically, you could oh, you know, oh, that, go wacky oh, with gosh. a negative. You would have to use a negative number, but that that would be okay, ish. The problem is on the burn side. Burn reads it as a D word. No, okay, and yeah. No, this is the problem. That, the problem is on it, the build side. Yeah. Oh, the, the problem is on the build side from using a signed. Yes, that's uh, the problem. Integer. The problem fixing it at that level is that we don't actually have an unsigned type because MSI doesn't have an unsigned type. Huh. 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 Awesome. Yeah. Nor does it have an int64, which would be the other way of going. Yeah, it does. Doesn't it? Oh, it has long. Uh, doesn't it have i4? Oh, no. I guess i2 uh, and i4. i4, yeah. Does not have an i8, so... Um, well, we just have to make sure all 32 bits get into the bundle. I mean, that's all we have to do. Yes, I agree with that. All right. Um, let's add that here. Oh, this is. Can you add that to your bug? Um, <laughs> now that I see who opened this. Um, yeah, because we want that. Yeah, okay. It's basically we're losing a bit in the transition from the managed to the native side. The high bit, which of course is isn't important a problem for, for an H result. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't a problem unless you actually need it, and yeah. you would need it for things that return interest. Oh, that's just dumb. How do we do? Okay, well, that's dumb. So yeah, this can be fixed in managed code. Simply, uh, um, yeah. No, I mean it, it can. It can. Um, I think it should be. I, I, because the pro like you said, the process return code is a D word, so the exit code is a D word, which makes sense. Yeah, that's all fine. The problem is we need to get the D word properly populated from the managed code side. So let's, I think that's the fix. Yep, I agree. Okay. Let, let's put that in there. Because when I read this, I thought this was a bug in burn. But I would argue burn's fine. It's the bundle creation that's bad. Burn probably is fine. The problem is fixing it on the managed side is uh, mildly intrusive since it starts digging into the... Uh, you know, what's a field? You know, it, it gets very low level if you want to start messing oh, no, around no, no, with don't, that. Don't, don't. Just store it as an int. You have all the bits still. Yeah. You should be able to turn it to a uint, right? And get all the bits back out. Uh, yeah. Which then save that to the bundle, and it should all be uh, fine. Very large negative number turns, or, yeah, it turns into very big number and you're all fine. I mean, it's just a matter of making sure we don't lose any bits. And it sounds like we're putting the int in there and we're, we're losing the negative bit because when burn reads the negative D word, it goes, oh, I'm kind of surprised we're not doing this already. Well, no, we're, we're, uh, sorry, I'm, I, I know, I know one way of fixing it that I code reviewed. Um, okay. Right now, burn reads it as a uint so the negative, you know, a, a leading negative sign fails, right? So we have to, it has to go into the manifest as an unsigned number. And that's all on the managed side, so consistent with what you said. Um, I'm just trying to figure out how we plumb that from the authoring into the Unreal table, and then into the manifest. Yeah. Since you want me to add a comment to the bug, I'm trying to figure out what to actually say. We can't use that. We can't, we can't do it entirely on the managed side if the solution is to just use the signed integer. In that case, we'd also have to change the burn side to say, oh, 
<laughs> it's negative. Fine, fine, fine. I'll convert that. Am I missing something? Yeah, no, I... My my brain is elsewhere. Um, I've been doing another part problem this morning. Um, yeah, let's just get a comment that captures the fact that something that the issue is that the signness from the man the build side is not getting into the manifest correctly. I think that's all we have to do. Because the all I'm saying is that I, when I read this, I thought that we needed to plumb a number, a negative number all the way through burn, and that's not what we need to do. We don't need to change the d-wordness of the exit code. We need to make sure that the value gets into the manifest correctly. I think that's, let's just leave it at that, and then how we go about doing that, we just have to go make sure that the number gets through correctly. Because it's just bits in the end, so we just have to get them represented into a yeah. number that burn can read. The manifest okay. can read. We don't have to fix it in... Right, in triage. Triage, yeah. All right. Okay. That's, not a comment. No, I, no, I, and I have to go write a block of code now because I'm just like, I'm so, no, I need to go write this other block of code. After I finish that, I'm going to come back and figure out why I can't get my head to think about that correctly. <laughs> um, auto version is broken. Huh? Okay. Uh, you can give this to me in four. I probably broke it. Blah. All right. Always verify hash, and this is still on me. Um, why don't we give this bug to me? Because we're not going to give this to Heath. <laughs> Good call. Um, but we can leave it on triage for now. I need it. Yeah, I'm just behind on a number of things. So. Anyway, good? That's good. All right. Now that we've gotten through all the boring stuff, I don't know, maybe it was interesting. Everybody on the call is like, oh, why can't they get the 32 bits converted correctly in their head? Anyway, um, fun stuff. Moving to GitHub. So it seems like everybody, and I mean everybody, which kind of surprised me, was like, yeah, let's move to GitHub now. And I was like, wow, I was expecting a whole bunch of people to say, no, please don't. That will mess with my world. Everybody's like, no, let's just get it over with. So we're probably going to do it soon. Um, probably second week of March. I would do it earlier except uh, I'm out next week, so I can't do it next week. Um, and I'm not going to get it done this week, because I got the Wix website moved mostly this week. There's a little bit left to do. Um, so anyway, probably second week of March. Um, at this point in time, unless some people chime in and say, no, 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 please don't, we're doing repro per Wix toolset major version, which means we're going to be able to do things like create a repo called Wix 3. The master branch in that will be Wix 3.8, which will be our last RTM branch, and the develop branch, which is the, seems to be a common nomenclature for the next and fits in Gitflow, which I'm starting to like a bit more as I use it more and more, would be 3.9. Um, and then we can create you know branches from there below develop for feature stuff if we need to or whatever. But you guys are all creating forks for your stuff, so it probably won't need necessary. Um, Wix 4 master will be empty when we start, and develop will continue Wix 4.0. Uh, the point at which Wix 3.9 and Wix 4.0 are done, they get um, merged up into master, and then we carry on from there. So it's all coolness, cleanness, and goodness. Um, at least that's my hope. Um, as noted in the past many times, we'll be doing clean history. So these will be basically take every single file and just check it in um, and all that kind of stuff. So, And I'm going to do the work to get these to be... Um, yeah, Bruce is asking if the white space problem is fixed, and I don't, I don't know that it's fixed. It's still been popping up in various places. Um, um, I've had no end of problems. So. <laughs> yeah. So, but uh, when we move to this repo, we will have the Git attributes set up front, and we will create new repositories for clean, which will fix the white space problem. 
it'll be correct from the beginning and we won't have this mishmash of files all over the place. Uh, that is kind of the driving factor for doing this at this point in time. Because when Bob started having all kinds of crazy white space problems, it just was kind of, it was getting a little bit crazy. So I think the biggest problem in doing this move this fast are the open pull requests. Um, and so as I put here, I want to talk about each request individually. Um, some of them will port over by hand. A bunch of them will try to get in before this, which means that if we can't get them in, but we say we're going to get them in before we move, uh, we won't be moving the second week of March, um, uh, things like that. It is not my goal to make a whole lot of work for the people that did the work to get their contributions up here. So if you put up something up there and you're like, oh no, he's going to totally mess everything up I did, I'm like, that is not our goal. Let's sit around and figure out how we can get this done best. Um, worst comes to worst, we get it into a clean fork in your world, and then I can try to pull them to the new repro and stuff like that. Um, it's just a matter of getting them all into a good place, given all the craziness that we have in the um, CodePlex repo, we might end up trying to cherry pick and stuff like that. And It'd be easier if we kind of go, yes, these are all good, let's get them in, and then move on forward from there. But we won't lose the work, it's just a matter of let's talk about each one individually. All right, so if there are questions, we'll push them to the next, because on that note, the open pull request note, I want to kind of go through the pull requests that we have open right now and um, have a, and see where we're at with them. So on that note, I'm jumping back to my pull requests. Do I still have my mouse cursor? Oh, yes, this was going to be impossible to navigate without my mouse cursor. Um, Tiny bugs is pretty nice about, you know, mousing or, or tabbing around. This, not so much. Um, all right, so if we go around to the bottom, this bug has been on my plate. Someone else wrote it, but this has been on my plate. This is a very tiny little fix that I just have to go through and say, worst comes to worst, I can port this one over um, by hand because um, it's so small. So I'm not worried about this last guy. Um, I believe this changes for self-updating bundles, which is features 4190, is the same as this issue up here because it had 4190 in part of the name. So yeah, 4190 here, dot one. So I think these are the same. I wish Jacob was here to confirm. Um, I'm, thus, I think this changes for self-updating bundles can be just punted, and we'll get it in this top for change up here. Um, does that sound right, Bob? I don't know if you've looked at that one. I think so. I didn't, I didn't compare them uh, very precisely. Yeah, they're... they're pretty close. I'm, I'm pretty sure that the core part of self-update has everything that the changes for self-updating bundles. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was aiming to figure out. Um, but hey, look, CodePlex, not perfect for looking yeah. at code. Yeah, well, so, um, patching issues in 4241. Um, we went through these, right? Uh, these two from Heath, and I think generally we're fine, if I remember correctly, right? because we, we punted out the other ones. Yeah. And we were going to start pulling these in, but then Heath didn't have a... <laughs> he hadn't signed his contribution agreement yet, so we couldn't pull it in. Right. I'm but, trying to remember which one. I actually... Yeah, that's... I got to the point of going, oh, okay, looks good. Oh, wait, what? Yeah. All right. So the uh, paperwork isn't in place for these. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I've looked at both. I know the MSU one is really, really simple. Yep. MSU All right. ones... All right, so we're just going to hope that he gets his agreement in sooner than later. Um, and if not, well, we'll follow up with him on the mailing list because he's not here today. Um, but Sean is here. Sean, do you happen to have audio available on your computer? I think so. Mm, that's a resounding maybe. Let's Let's see what happens if I unmute you. All right, no screeching cats or anything like that, so you're not at Bob's house. Yeah, I was going to say, that, that's my job. <laughs> so can you hear me? Yay, we have a Sean. Yep. Awesome. All right. Um, so I think I've been through 3643. Three. Let me just look real quick if this is the one I remember it to be. Um, this brings in the upgrade code, yes, and does a little bit of extra work. No, this is just the upgrade code. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, and then this little extra shift here that does the song and dance around being absent in that. Yes. Right. Actually checks to see that the upgrade code is the same upgrade code when testing. Right. And sure it sets it that out of the binder. Right. And it gets that from the binder. And it so it doesn't go so it doesn't take something that was major upgraded and downgrade it to a downgrade. <laughs> no pun intended. Um all right, so I, I was through this. I think the hard part about this one that took me a while was I think we need to do a bit more on the comment here because this is a little tricky to understand. But this is fine. This one was really straightforward. So, yeah, this one was not a hard bug to cover. Although, yeah, there it is. Package.h. This package.h was not freed, was it? Was that the thing or was it? Yeah, I think this is missing. It's free somewhere. But anyway. Um, so I made I, a comment on Jacobs about not freeing something. Yes, no. which then cascaded into a whole bunch of other crazy problems. Um, there it is. From there. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. Right there. Without, oh, because it's in MSI Engine. Right, cause package, yes. Uh, it's been, I mean, burn has completely been cached to disk. So anyway, I think this pull request <laughs> I've been through and it's all good. So I think that one is just a matter of pulling it in. And that goes in the 4.0, so that's straightforward enough. We don't have to worry about breaking people, which is, I think, yeah, what you said here. All right, cool. That one's good. And we don't have a Jacob today. So we're going to go into secure hidden variables. Um, this thing scares me a little bit. <laughs> did, did it surprise you how big this got? In the yeah, order? it was free spread. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm I'm one of the big things I was worried about well, there's a couple one of them was um initializing crypto which if is if it is what I remember it to be um sorry I'm trying to get my bearings here it's actually a relatively slow operation um and this is in the boot path for oh no this is not all of crypto being initialized this is just loading somebody else uh, right. What the heck is this, dude? Um, the, crypt, <laughs> <laughs> the Crypt Protect memory isn't available until Vista. So really? to get the RTL encrypt memory, it's that crazy function name. <laughs> which, which is, so they basically expose Crypt Protect memory on top of the RTL Crypt Protect memory that's in Advapi. Well, I'm not sure it's the exact same because of the, the block size is different. Because <laughs> RTL requires the block size to be 8, but Cryptek memory requires 16. Oh, man. <laughs> and then the RTL encrypt memory is marked as deprecated. The RTL encrypt memory is deprecated? It well, says not to rely on it. <laughs> all of well, yeah, because it's RTL. You, the, they say that about yeah. everything in the RTL. It's like you are using the internals of you know Windows. Thou shalt might be broken. Um, it's kind of the same thing we do with Wix. If you use the internals of us, we're like, oh, cool. Let's go figure out how we can change that to break you. Um, what's your what's your feeling on this change? Because I'm like, it touches a lot um, and. Does it add a lot? I guess that's was my thing. Is like, are we getting a lot out of this? There's all these comments all over the place that say, think about doing this variable as well. Like, what if the variables? Yeah, like it's all these things too. Well, I mean, those were about like if you have a hidden variable in there, it could go the log. That's right. Right. If you had a hidden variable in a path, which sounds a little weird too. Um. So I, I think I mentioned this to Bob. I was wondering, like, I don't know that MSI encrypts their hidden variables. So I'm just, I'm wondering, do we want to change all of this to affect, and, and this affects all variables, right? All variables end up being secure strings, essentially? No, I only did hidden. Only hidden? All right. Yeah. I was going back and forth while I was implementing it, but... I decided on just hidden. Except all the things that they might end up in then become 
secure, so it, it doesn't affect the code that direction. Yeah. Um, and so what we're protecting against here is a crash that our memory dump won't have passwords in it in the end, right? Right. Or does Windows zero out memory when you close? That's a fair point. Yeah, who knows what the what's left on the heap when you let all your stuff go. You know, it could hang out there for a while, I suppose, if you could find it. But if you could find that memory, wouldn't you probably have to be elevated? I don't know the deep internals of the memory manager, but... <laughs> yeah, this is a Raymond Chen airtight hatchway question, isn't it? I mean, basically, if it goes into memory, then it could be paged to the page file. And if it's paged to the page file, now it's on disk. It. Yeah, you could find it. You could get lucky. Hmm. What's the change to the Wix standard PA? Right. Right. Yeah. And there was a couple of free bugs in there that are fixed. That you mean in general? Yeah. There All was right. some places where variables weren't being uninitialized. I think we can take this in 3.9 without implications? Because you can still free a secure string, you just won't get the secure part of it if you don't free it correctly, right? Uh, it'll everything? only be zeroed out if you right. call it correctly. Yeah, so, but it it's not like, you know, you'll crash or you get bad memory, or it won't le you won't leak memory or you won't get crashes if you free it the non-secure way. Um, you just I guess the only question I have is really the memutal part. I think that's the only part that could really be messed up. Because basically I had to implement moving the memory if it wasn't big enough. Because when you encrypt it, it can get bigger, right? Well, actually, the encryption part was really easy. Most of this change is about zeroing out when freeing. So when I, when you go to heap realloc, there was no contract that will zero out the memory if it has to. Oh, open. I see. I see. <laughs> wow. So you had to, you tried to, oh, you found the old memory? Yes. New. And then you had PVIC. And then you, if it can't move it, then you allocate the new. Yeah. New, the old. Keep realloc in place only, I see. the right thing to do is the problem. It's just like all of our string functions are now duplicated, which is not exciting. Not that we've changed them much anymore, but it's like, oh, I didn't like these that much as they are. <laughs> <laughs> so here's another copy. Yeah, so here's another copy to keep in sync with them. Well, I guess the right thing to do would be add a Boolean variable to all of those, right? Well, that's the, well, <laughs> no, to, you'd create a worker function underneath that would have these two things, the facades over it that would end up passing a Boolean underneath, but yeah. Um, 
that that I mean that's the kind of stuff I'm also comfortable doing later, you know, like following up with too. It's like okay, this is a structure now. Let's kind of go back and clean things up. Um, so where secure secure where was the crypt stuff then? It's in the where variants. Is? It's all in the variants. Yep. So secure string doesn't. So the the secure part of these methods is zeroing out when it frees, or if it has to move the memory on reallocation, it zeroes out the old one. Okay. So the stuff in memory is not encrypted then. It's just a string. It's only encrypted in the variant. I see. Only the variant does it. So actually, I mean, most of this pull request is zeroing out the memory. Right. I, I understand now. That's why I was a little confused of why this was. OK. So it's all up in the variant, down the variant, I guess. Where is oh, variant still in burn, isn't it? Hmm. Right, this is what I... Th oh, we decrypted string, then decrypted string was only if it needed to be. Is that what I missed? Hmm. Yeah, and, and decrypted ah, string... Ah, there it is, I see. Yeah. I see, that's what I was missing. Hmm. All right, well, yeah, I don't know what to do, like, I don't know what to do with all the, the comments are kind of interesting, it's like, what do we do if the variable's hidden, keep the value in encrypted and secure zero free? So, like, those comments were really just... If we add code later that calls these methods, they need to be careful about the string. Yeah, well, it, it, I don't know if we, yeah, so at a certain level, I don't know if we need, the, the comments are kind of like basically saying, you have to think about this way, but honestly with this, we have to think about that way all the time. Every string you have to think about being a secure string now um, in burn. You just, you have to, it has to just be something you do. Um, and then you get into things that, yeah. You're never, you're not going to know most of the time whether this started as a hidden variable. Yeah, and it could get, yeah, like some of the logging that you point out, correctly point out, could have a hidden variable in it. Yeah. It would be really bad to lose. Like, you wouldn't be able to debug. I don't know why. I don't know why. Well, I, mean, we, I guess we could just say don't put hidden variables in paths, and then that would fix that. Yeah, well, and fortunately, not a very common place to put secure stuff anyway. I mean, really what we're talking about here is passwords. I mean, right? Right. And and maybe if someone has some kooky licensing scheming thingy, they could get into it too, I suppose. But really we're talking about this variable has a password in it. Right. But then, oh, but we already do the right thing on the logging of parameters being passed to MSI and stuff like that, right? We already right. don't write those to our log file, although I don't know that MSI doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't. As long as, long as you mark as them you... hidden. Mark them hidden on right. their side. That's right. So, yeah. I bootstrap it. Oh, and then this is on the 
basically I have to copy the other one and then replace most string with int pointer and then have to do the marshalling myself. <laughs> awesome. Oh, right, because you want a secure string. And this is the whole engine interface duplicated? I didn't actually use the whole thing, but I went ahead and did it. Do you inherit from I, I, do you inherit from it? Um wait, can no, you? I just I declared wait. it as the same GUID. Okay. Because it is the same interface. So I can just cast between them. <laughs> oh, right, you can <laughs> cast into secure. Can't we just replace it? We can just replace it. Right? Not unless you want to do all the string marshalling yourself everywhere. No, 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 sorry. No, sorry. I mean, no, we can. Why do we need I bootstrap secure engine? Why can't we just have add these things to to the engine? If you know how to do that with pinvoke, I don't know how to do that to redeclare the method with two different parameter types. Which method? Are, which method are we talking about? Wait, so I'm, I'm talking about, about the. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think we're talking <laughs> about two different things. You're, from what I understand, is that the to the interface for the managed code, there is now the ability to get the secure string variables. That's what this is. What was added, right? Basic right. from a public facing thing. Right. So can we not just add this to engine, and add this to that's engine? Where, that's where it is. Right, but then why do you need the secure engine? Because you had to you had to write the p invoke imports, and you can't. The other ones were declared as strings, and I needed in pointers. Oh, where it's getting the data from? When it's actually calling into the engine. The engine. Where is that? So like this dot secure engine that set variable string. Um, what if we what if we uh what if we add set variable secure string? Then I would think that that would imply that you're sending it in encrypted, which we're not doing right now. Oh, sorry, what if we add it to uh, the, the native side, a set secure string? Like, great. If you go to the line above it, it's turning the secure string into a normal string. So now it's not encrypted anymore. So we're sending it in encrypted. So, I mean, I guess we could add, if we added the set variable secure string, we would have to add parameters to say how it's encrypted. Um, yes, and if the burn engine, right, but, uh, But let me ask this differently. Um, if I'm a BA, how do I set a secure variable? How do I create a secure variable? Um, if you look at the code above it, that's how it creates the secure string from the string that it gets from the engine. But, but if you're a BA, you, you can create it with like the cred UI get password stuff. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, sorry, but when I pass it to burn, when I pass it to burn, burn won't know that it's secure, will it? That it should be secure inside burn. It won't store it, it won't set the the encrypted flag on the variant inside. Right, right. you're going to have to, you're, you have to, the variable is hidden during build time, during compile time. Right. The bundle. Right. So, the, so, sorry, this is, I, I'm walking through a thought exercise here. So, if I wanted as a BA to be able to do that, then I would say, I could say set secure variable, which would then 
I would not have to declare it up front. I could create one after the fact. Or I could create one that, as a BA, I could create a secure variable at that point, or a secure string at that point, if we had if we provide that mechanism. Which then gets back to the point you made. You have to tell us how it's encrypted, if not, or whatever. Um, it almost has to be unencrypted when you pass it to the engine, because the engine's going to encrypt it itself. And trying to keep the two in sync could be fascinatingly difficult. Wait, because if you're encrypting it on your side, then you're just going to feed us a blob at that point. You're going to yeah, here's my string. And we're going to go, oh, look, hex, woo, and manage it. Yeah, but then I need you to send that in clear text to the MSI. Right. Well, it wouldn't <laughs> work. It wouldn't work as passing to an MSI. Usually if, I mean, in this scenario, it's more the BA is storing data for itself because it's going to get stored in the, the BA file so it could get to it later. Well, it could. Uh, sorry, the um, the resume file. Hmm. Mm, that's bad. Well, we we already don't store. I think we skip them right now. If they're hidden. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I don't think so. No, you think we we store them? I thought we, I thought we took the easy way out. Oh, this is so long. <laughs> I thought we took the easy way out, which was don't store them, and always knowing that what we really need to do is crypt them and then store them. That's uh, not what I saw. <laughs> what, you mean <laughs> the hidden ones are actually being stored in the resume file? As far as I saw, oh. like, wasn't it called, like, sterilize data or something like that? Yeah, sorry. We're, we're in very old code for my brain, and like I was saying before, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm not there right now. Um, all right, so, but that's, a, that's neither here nor there. That issue is not this issue. Um, that's an interesting issue, but it's not this one. Um, so I guess I'm just wondering if, it, if there's value in being able to tell from the VA, say, I got a password here or whatever, store this, vari store this variable securely. So if we had that ability, then you'd be able to call in the engine set variable secure string, let's say. I, I don't see any point in passing the engine a password if it's not going to pass that on to something else. Well, it's going to pass this to itself, potentially. But if you can't pass it to a package, what are you, what are you doing with it? Well, eventually, I guess where I'm going is that eventually you're going to want to remember it. Sorry, I, I'm heading down the path of eventually we're going to be able to rem remember these. Right, so, oh, here's why you do it. Um, well, depending. Uh, you want to use it for your proxy uh, validation for your Internet connection or whatever. Right, right. Or something like that, right? You're basically just storing it. Although the point then could be you should probably use well, you have to be you don't have to be elevated to use the credential manager, right? No. Well, per user. For for the user, which is all that this would be in the end. Yeah. I guess I see all these things we're talking about as extra feature requests. <laughs> well actually what I'm trying to do is well you no, know, the only thing I'm trying to they, they are, I'm sorry. I'm trying to line up this feature so it fits in where we where we want to go versus just here we did this thing now we have to go back and redo it when we go forward and so if we had a set variable secure string I wonder if we could get rid of or get out of this extra interface you see what I'm saying um, then it would just be a feature on every engine right well and it I'm, I'm trying to get it there's there's a whole lot of there's a whole it's it's this thing of every time you touch a variable now you don't know if it's secure or not right so we could then go back and start saying if it, not in three nine 
uh, not in 3x, uh, we could start saying, look, if you ask for a secure string from the get string, it doesn't get it, right? Which then means you now know when you call the secure API, you have to do a secure free on it. You see, you see I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to get this down a path where the user, when they walk through it, has a decent chance of, you know, succeeding or at least being guided in the right direction versus here, here's a string. You might want to think about how you use that. Um, or, you know, you might want to call secure string on it all the time, which is probably what they would do. Because if it's UI, they don't have a perf problem. Um, <laughs> at least not this perf problem, probably. I hope. Um, I can see that as maybe being a 4.0 thing, but I mean, I find value in this functionality here. And it could just yeah. be a 3x, 4x split. Yeah. Wait, you can encrypt numbers too? Hmm. I thought while I was at it, I might as well do it. <laughs> <laughs> No, you cannot see. What number am I hiding? Uh. Hmm. And is this true? Then it should be kept encrypted and secure. This isn't. This is just kind of continuing, right? I mean, what does it mean to encrypt a number? I don't know. Bob brought up the pin number example. Yeah, I guess. Although, do you actually have to secure zero memory? Oh, wait, wait that's a, a long, well, long. Is well, it just setting it to zero? Well, yeah. if you set it to zero, will the compiler optimize that out? That's where. That's the whole point of the secure zero memory. It's making sure the compiler doesn't optimize it out. It doesn't optimize the zero memory. It's like, hey, you never touch this again. I'm not going to bother zeroing that for you. Oh, man. Yeah, you you really have to get into paranoid mode Yeah. when you're doing this. And that's security. That kind of goes together. Yeah, I guess that's. I think that's what I'm just reacting to is that we just. I. I we we've just because variables are so low. We just went. We just added another level of paranoia to burn. I mean, like we didn't have enough with the elevation problems. Now we have this too. Speaking of elevation, how does this stuff get serialized over? I assume we don't do anything more special than we did before. For serialization. No. Okay. I didn't really encounter that. Where does it? Oh, is that going to be a problem if you do an over-the-shoulder? Well, no. It's going to pass the, the variables still, right? I mean, it's just going to get them on, pass them all over. Right, but can you decrypt? On one side and then to the other? From different users. Uh, is, is the decrypt function, is it using the machine information? Uh, it's doing the per process, but... Process, oh. Yeah, it's that's encrypting not gonna, per process. But, that's definitely not going to work then. But right. it's not sending the thing around encrypted. Like, as right. soon as it has to... Mm -hmm. As soon as you get the value of a variable, it's unencrypted. Yes, it's unencrypted. And that's what we pass then over the pipe. Wait, we're piping... Oh, so we're just piping the values of the variables. Well, the names and values. I mean, we pipe all the pairs over. Oh, uh, okay. <sighs> well, but now that's concerning, though. I mean, you now have two processes that have copies of the unencrypted data. Do 
so like in a typical case, the elevated process is going to you know pass those two packages being executed. Um, is there and and there's no evidence to that process that the strings that's passing around are are secure or are requested to be secured. Basically, I think you have to assume that once you start actually using the string, you have to unencrypt it. Yeah, I, I guess I'm. Well, I guess my real concern is, you know, we're, we are passing these things over a pipe. The pipe's secured, and that's been, you know, that's been hardened there. Um, but there's one elevated process from burn that's going to execute all of your packages. So it has it has the strings unencrypted basically for its lifetime. And it doesn't know to treat them any differently. Uh that tr well, it will know if they're secure, so it should do the same thing to them if they're marked in the manifest. Oh, because it's gonna pass the hidden attribute. Well it doesn't pass a hidden it. attribute, but it passes the name the same name and when it gets to the other side the other guy's gonna be like, Oh, you go into hidden. Boom, and it gets re-encrypted when it gets pushed back in. Um, the elevated side's going to know that the variable should be hidden and do the right thing like it always does. Okay, I'm, I'm working from a from an incomplete understanding of burn in general. Um, the elevated <laughs> side, sorry, the, so you're saying the pipe is used to reconstruct these things exactly as before? The When the elevator process starts, or when you hit apply, it sends yeah. the variables. It serializes the variables that you have on the client side, the non-elevated side, to, right. the, to the elevated side in mass, in one big pass. And then it basically reinitialize on the elevated side it goes thank you I will now initialize my variable store to match your your unelevated side right because it, okay, it needs so to be the same otherwise your installs are completely wrong on the elevated side right your variables yeah, yeah. are all wrong this, this is a feature of the variable um, system that it can serialize and deserialize a blob of variables right Okay, because well, but, elsewhere... But you can, imagine, you can imagine we're just calling set variable, set variable, set variable, set variable, set variable. I mean, we just send them well, over in one big, huge push. Right, right. Uh, I guess I'm more familiar with the cases where we're, you know, we're, we're poking, you know, int-sized things across the pipe and using that to reconstruct, you know, a structure um, as yeah. opposed to, you know, uh, we're serializing by hand a lot of things, is but where I'm going with that. We have so, a message system that we've written yes. that's custom. Yep. And we serialize stuff over those messages. One of the messages is, here's your variables. Yes. It's not, here's your variable name, here's a variable value, here's a variable attribute. <sighs> here's a no, variable name. No, it's definitely not the attribute. No. Okay. That's, we, send as, sorry. we send as little information from the um, unelevated side to the elevated side because yeah. the elevated side generally doesn't want to trust the unelevated side except sure. where there is no other choice. Yeah, yeah. Like, I, I don't know what the user told you. I will have to trust you that the user told you that. Yes. Okay. I, I just, sorry. Where, I guess where I'm going with that is the the variables values are sitting there unencrypted. So I, across the pipe, they're sitting there from the unelevated side across the pipe into the unelevated side where they're immediately encrypted again. That being the case, then the last 10 minutes of conversation was a waste because my objection doesn't make any sense. Well, everybody learned a little bit there. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the difference is this time it's actually recorded, which means someone that ever finds this thing can actually sit here and go, oh, my God, Burn does a lot more than I ever thought about it. Doing yeah, there you go. And and you can thank Frederick and my darker days when we were building all this. Um, so, but damn it, your 
downloads happen in the appropriate user context, which means it works in proxies more often than not. Yes. I think which is probably one of our bigger wins. Anyway, um, Sean, this is very, very, very cool. I, I, I probably should have started with that um, <laughs> so that you didn't start on the foot going, these guys think I completely wasted my life doing all this work. That's, that's not it at all. Um, Thanks. It's just, this is a, it's just, this is a, a big change for everything. Sorry. My my perpetual challenge, I was going to say problem, but it's just a challenge, is that more code always shows up, and we're still in early days where it's still, you know, how many people are going to stick around to help maintain it, which means right now I, I tend to be more probably defensive than maybe I should be in the whole, when this gets dropped on me, I have to then figure out how to maintain this forever kind of you know, mentality, which is honestly how Wix has survived forever because we've been through five versions of people working on the Wix tool set, except me. Um, so, <laughs> and there are only a couple areas that suffer badly, like Votive and Heat, um, and to a lesser degree, Pyro, but I lean on Bob for that at this point, honestly. Um, he, he doesn't like to hear that. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. <laughs> um, but anyway... So I, I'm just I'm I'm going through this and all the things and so it's like what I'm thinking about is the the if this is one of those um, the, we're gonna get the security from our, this layer of stuff I'm I'm now thinking about all the other things we need to secure to close the gap because security of course is only as strong as its weakest link, to use the horrible, horrible cliche that, unfortunately, I don't have a better one. Um, because it's like, Bob brings up the point indirectly, um, all these variables get serialized over the pipe, which means they're unencrypted at that point, um, which is the point at which you'd want to go get them which is a, a very straightforward, easy place to go find because it you know, has a very distinct call that we're doing, namely the elevation call. What are we protecting against? Are we protecting against a crash in the end? Because we're not, we're not keeping these variables invisible for some really nasty points in time very exposed points in time, if you know what I mean. like Where things are going to might fail, or are more likely to fail and expose. Or, or be attacked and all that kind yeah. of stuff. So I'm just... Where are we at? What, what do you th where do you think we are in those kind of things? Because you've thought about this a bit more. You, you've been through the code, honestly, more recently than I have through all these areas. Does my question make sense? Well, I mean, I guess my... What I really wanted was zeroing out the memory to make sure that the password isn't there when we close. That was my primary goal. I see. Okay. Okay. So the encryption was more of a, you know, well, the secure string is doing this on the managed side, so we better do it here, too. Okay. All right. So the goal really is the shutdown of the process. The, the memory is... When burn is gone, it doesn't leave behind the password and memory, so the next process that comes along and gets it. Or something. Or if you do a memory dump or something like that. A memory dump of? Of memory. Like, if you crash or something, or if it's page disk, then it gets in the disk, and then if it could, you know, using forensics, you could go into the hard disk and get the unallocated sectors and stuff like that. Right, but <laughs> but but that so I, I get that, but that's, that's the one that I'm actually most concerned about. That's the one that doesn't work necessarily. Because we have these areas where we've mass we're mass moving them unencrypted. You, you see what I'm saying? Or I mean that's the that's the challenge. I I'm trying to put my my security guy hat on. You know, because I've had many times. Uh, sorry, I've been through the experience of security guys where they're like, "Yeah, that's really nice what you did." So I just attack you here, and all that stuff you did makes no, you know, doesn't matter at all. And I sit there, look at the guy, and going, "Wait, really? 
And I'm like, well, yeah, so why would I bother attacking all those other things that you protected? I would just attack this one thing. They're very fatalistic. They're just like, you know, they would never give you any inch. You'd just be like, yeah, yeah, doesn't matter. You didn't protect this. And you're like, oh, great, I'll go find a way to protect that. So that's I'm. So I get the shut down the process and the memory being gone there. The As Bruce brings up in the comments, the whole right-click and create a dump file. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, and, and you can do uh, sys internals. You, you can, well, that requires elevation, though. Yeah, so I'm not worried about elevation. You know, that, that's, that's yeah. you know, if you're elevated, have fun. Like, there are yeah, much yeah, more yeah. fun things to go do. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> go do those. Um, I, I'm, I, like I said, you've been in this more, so I'm, I'm curious. Am, am I wrong? Um, cause I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. Um, be surprised how often I'd like to be wrong. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Please tell me. Well, I guess me. yes. There's more to do, but. This helps, <laughs> I guess. Right, right. So I, I'm, I'm fine with that. That's a fine statement too. Like that's, that's completely reasonable. Um, it just turns into, um, I guess that turns into what's the plan of attack for the rest, right? I wouldn't want to make the claim, hey, we have this secure thing, but it's not secure, right? It's like we have the foundation for a secure thing. We have these areas that we still have to finish. Is that is that true? I'd like to think it is. <laughs> oh, sorry, but we we do have stuff to finish. Sorry, that part. I I know we have a foundation because this is this has done a lot of certainly has done a lot of the foundation work to get there. Um, right. And, uh, that's why I'm. I really am asking, like, because I really I don't know. Like, there there is a bit more to do in these areas. Like, well, obviously we have to go think about the state file, because if we're storing hidden things in the state file, that's going to make me sad. Um, well, it might have been the code that was passing stuff to the engine, because I, I guess I wasn't really aware of that code. So that might have been the code I was looking at, where okay. it sends it off. Well, that I totally know we passed them unencrypted. <laughs> All right, cool. I hope that's what it was. I really hope it was. <laughs> we don't save it to the test file. I'm going to have to go look. Uh, let's go look. Um, all right, so so at this point you're saying we should take this change and we should probably keep moving forward with it. Is that where you, you're at? I don't know. Where would you say you're at, Sean? I'm not, I'm not really interested in going further. I mean, if, if you tell me, like, this, this covers the cases that I want to be secure against, so if you want to tell me like what else you want to secure against, I can go ahead and do that. But I'm not sure what else we want to protect against. All right, well that's fair. I, I I don't expect you to know the whole system by implementing one feature through it. That certainly wasn't the issue. It's it's more the other way around of like, oh well this doesn't work or this has an issue, and this one isn't going to be this doesn't have a work in it. <sighs> Security features are like this, right? It's not that the feature doesn't work. It's that it's not complete because there's one tiny hole in it. Um, so it would be the, what do we do with serialization? Well, can, okay, I, I'm at the point where I need higher level. Um, is this something we can, um, can, we, can we treat this as two things? Zero memory, zeroing memory, and encrypting strings? Because it okay, sounds like so, so, zeroing right. memory is a good thing. And hell, maybe we should do it all the time. Um, and the the encryption, well, sorry, zeroing memory seems to be something straightforward, and I'm maybe missing something, but it it touches fewer layers of the system, whereas the encryption gets us into the point where where we're, you know, we're really we're touching a lot of things. It's exposing the question of, you know, what does it mean to, yeah. to pass stuff across process, all that. I think I think you have a very good point. So if we separate them, as you're suggesting, which is probably a very good idea, if we do a secure string, what that's saying is that the window for getting a password out of a burn dump is smaller for many of the places where we might have them written. 
right? It's within basically a function call that uses a secure string. Is that correct, Sean? I think so. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> My hope is you're, you're you're like yes, that's exactly what this code does. <laughs> well, <laughs> you wrote it. My, I'm just sitting here going, uh, this is my understanding of the code review that I've only done. I'm really the of- secure zero thing I I see is protecting against when it shuts down cleanly, then it's taken out of memory. I mean, right. if you crash, then there's nothing you can do. Well, it's also if you crash outside of a function that touched a secure variable, you're still good, right? It's only when you crash within a function that has a secure variable. Sorry, so, secure, you're saying encrypted. Incri- no, no, well, no, cause, because Sean's point is if I, I call MSI engine, I pass it, you know, a hidden variable, when I exit that function, it zeroes out the memory. So I know that by the time I exit the call to MSI to do that, the variable that burn had is now zeroed. Where with the, the code that's currently checked in without Sean's fix, when I exit that function, there's no guarantee that the hidden variable that I just passed down is not floating right in memory. So if I was to crash then at the next thing, you know, outside of that MSI function, that variable may still be around. Well, that that's mostly that right? at the function level, the right, or at the uh, copy level, right? So we copy the hidden variable whose contents we know unencrypted, plain text. We copy that into a couple of different strings for whatever a particular function is doing. Right, but but right now when we exit a function and we just call release string, which just frees the memory, there's no guarantee that what's in memory isn't still the password. Sorry, I, I'm just saying what within a function we can only guarantee the, like the copies that we make. The original is still around. Uh, right. Original. So, so if you were crash, terrible. if you crash somewhere, then wherever you're storing all the variables, it's still in clear text and memory. Right. right sorry, I was getting to that one. Right. Yes, that's true. Okay. So that that that's yes, that's where you add the encryption. Right. So at at the bottom. Yes, I, right. yes, I, true. But what we're doing is reducing the window within a function yeah, of yeah. getting a string. Right now we have that. Right now we have that. So that's the, you know, that's what the secure zero memory is. Right. And then you're left with, and then there's the one where all of them, the variables are actually held. Right. Right. And that's always, of course, a problem, which is what the encryption is trying to solve. And so then that just means that we have these windows that are left of things where you can see the variables. Right. whatever variables are being asked. And so those windows are within the functions that are using secure variables. One of the more interesting ones being the serialization of all variables um, to the elevated side. Right? Right. Okay. So that's the, the kind of the summary of where we're at. So and there's no way of protecting all things all the time like because when it's in a function when you're calling it you have to have it not gobbledygook otherwise it's not going to do you any good right (laughs) we can't pass the gobbledygook to msi and say hey this is encrypted have fun with that yeah perfect (laughs) encryption something you can never decrypt do the right thing um all right. Part of this, um, just for future reference, is um, is trying to. I don't know. It's it's challenged sometimes, but getting a background in the the pull request sometimes can help. But. Um, or at least the core nuggets, but this thing is just complicated, so we were going to talk about it for a while anyway. Um, Okay. I'm still not completely sold on the the burn, secure burn engine interface over the um, uh, yeah, this over the um, because like 
Jacob's thing is going to blow this up because he's going to add another variable. That's the challenge of this. Versus adding the set secure variable. But we can also fix that in a subsequent check-in too, trying to get rid of that extra call. Sorry, I'm back to the, the API interface to BAs so that they can set the secure variables um, from their side. So that they can pass us insecure variables and we can encrypt them on our side or whatever. Jacob, did you say secure string uses the same encrypt memory API? Jacob? Sorry, Jacob. Sean? Sorry. I, I switched to, I've been, I'm pretty, pretty sure. Better. Does that mean we could just pass the memory, like the bytes across, and it could potentially work? I'm not saying we should. I'm just saying we could. Is that I, what you were doing? I didn't want to take a dependency on assuming .NET. No, 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 no. I, the same I, thing. No, sorry. Uh, for my own curiosity, that's your understanding, though, right? We could have passed the bytes along and, technically speaking, could have passed the whole thing encrypted from the BA to the engine side without ever going unsecure. Uh, probably. probably. I think you would have to tell the engine that it was encrypted. Well, well, certainly. Yeah, the engine would have to know, hey, I'm getting a secure string. That's encrypted. Um, okay. To be honest, I don't, I don't know which encryption mode it uses, because there's like per process, per user, and per logon session, or something like that. So I don't know which of the three it uses. Is there no per machine? I hope there's a per machine. That everyone can get to? I'm not sure what the point of that would be. But you can't take the hard drive and do anything with it. <coughs> I thought there was one that was something like that. Maybe that's for the protect data. Where oh, you're protect data. Uh, you're right. No, I'm thinking protect data, not protect memory. Um, you're right. I think it protect data. Um, all right. Um, all right. What do you think, Bob? Uh, I would. I would like to. I'd like to look at what it would be if the two concepts of zeroing memory and encryption were split. Well, no, 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 because, I mean, it's fine to think about it that way, but the, the variable store has to be encrypted, otherwise it doesn't do you any good. Yeah, well, okay, I guess the other thing I'm wondering is how much of this is something we actually need or want to deal with on an individual variable basis? Is there is there some reason apart from, you know, debuggability, that we couldn't, say, always encrypt and securely free the strings? Um, I don't know what you're going to do to perf. That's the, yeah. I don't know. That's my only question, because it, I, I'm, I'm, you know, sometimes this is just one of those things, you don't need to offer, you know, features you don't need, sorry you don't need to offer features at the you know individual variable level maybe this is just something something you opt into it's is the bundle you know secure Do you, yes no well, I don't know if it's much different at the variable level versus not then I mean, if it's an opt-in like the it's it essentially does burn do this all the time to everything well versus, that's why I, that's why I said well, okay, opt in no no not, not even opt-in like it's just just always do it yeah yeah Burn encrypts its variable store. If you don't want it, tough, it's encrypted. Yeah. And it pays the price for everything being encrypted. Right. And, you know, there are obviously huge bundles out there that have a lot of variables and therefore, you know, would would perf kill the, those. Um, I'm, I'm wondering that from a user perspective for, you know, making decisions, and also does it simplify the code if we can you know, reduce the surface area of things you can configure. If everything's always secure, then you don't have to worry about, you know, oh, is it hidden or, you know, the are we passing? The problem is if it's hidden, it doesn't end up in the log file. So that right now is the biggest flip. 
Okay, but that's all that that we already do at a certain cost. Right. That I remember from writing some of that code. Oh man, yes. we got we got to do that twice. Yes, we do. <clears throat> now, got to do that three times. Yes, we do. Well, no, it's not three times, but no, you, you see what I'm saying? It's just it's one more layer on top of of what we already have. Um. Yeah, so that's the extent of what I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I think I think this doing this at the variable level makes a lot of sense, and I see how that's plumbed through. I get it. Yeah. The string functions I might go through and refactor so that they they use a common base and stuff like that, but because the duplicated code is challenging to maintain, um, but you know. Whatever. Uh, it, the duplicated, the big things that are duplicated are challenging to maintain, like this interface here with the engine. Right, and right. The string functions being, the, the bulk of them being duplicated. For example, the the printf version that we have is pretty gnarly, and it actually has a commenting going, I don't think I have to do this anymore because I'm zeroing the memory, but it's kind of like, oh, we really should have one implementation of that, not two, because that code's already pretty brutal. Um, So I, I think this is. I mean, it's right if, if it's right. It's the right thing I think to do for the hidden variables only, because that means that if you don't have hidden variables, you don't pay any of these costs except for sure. the loading of the system function zero four zero or whatever the hell that. <laughs> well, it does do the secure Alex string everywhere. So the you're secure Alex, which, which you're paying. So that, that zeroes the memory. But also that mem realloc reimplementation, where it has to copy the memory itself. For every string? Oh, every string that could be secure. Yep. But how, like, how many is that? Like, that's a handful, right? Well, I mean, that's most of the changes I had to make. Yes, but were, I mean, in the end, changing string alloc to string secure alloc. But we only do so for the things that could be secure. We don't do that for everything, right? I didn't didn't miss. But all variables could be secure. So every time we get a variable string, every time we get, every time we resolve a variable. Every time we resolve a variable, it could contain a hidden variable. Yep. Mm. So every variable resolution gets this. Yeah. So that means that any variable string ends up being a secure string. It will be zeroed out, yeah. Or a zero string or whatever. And that's this here. Download. That's why I was, this is down low, right? What am I in? Is this in variables yet? There it is. Now that's search. I don't, I don't know if we've mentioned this, but don't really like the codeplex UI. Um, Yeah. Well, then that goes to Bob's point. Why not make all of these secure all the time? I guess the only thing would be the encryption cost. Right. That would be the only cost because we're already doing the secure string cost. Well, that should be that should be easy enough. To do simple perf testing on, though, you know, stir alloc ten thousand strings, stir secure alloc or whatever the function is called, ten thousand strings, and you know, see what kills you. Uh, yeah, and securely free them. Blah blah blah. Even I, I'm I'm thinking of something like Visual Studio, which you know ends up having thousands of variables. 
it's thousands. It's you know. Yeah, that's not going to make a difference. It, it's. Although, how often do we format? We don't format in the engine very often. No. Okay. I don't think I don't think it's going to affect. No, the, I don't think it'll matter. Apply perf, which is what you know people are going to actually care about. Yeah, no, I don't think it's enough to work on there. Man. I almost want to add another bit to secure string just so that we don't have to pass it to a separate function. We can just call stir free and it can go, oh, this is a secure string, free it. That would simplify things. Yeah, I just don't know how to do it. And I don't want to zero the string all the time because we end up in a lot of cases where we're, we build up strings and that would be crazy. All right, well, I understand it. Um, it would... I think it's definitely the right direction. I have to think about the things we're missing, but that's that's not this change necessarily. Um, it, it turns into, is it a 3.9 thing then? Well, that's that's why I'm I'm. So I've asked about simplification. If there are ways we can simplify these. Well, I um, don't I don't think it's gonna. It you've already got the secure variables on the secure strings on all variables out of the bundle, and the only thing it's doing now is if it's hidden, it encrypts it as well. Right. Versus right. if it's if it's a variable encrypted, which you know I, I don't know that's not that big a deal. We already do extra stuff for hidden, so. Right. Um. So I think Sean's instincts, as he worked through all this, you know, they're all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know. I'm, I'm just, um, I, I am concerned because this obviously touches multiple layers, um, which would normally be a, you know, a trigger for uh, something not going into three X. Um, I'm concerned about the deutal stuff. Uh, I personally don't care about MBA, but, you know, it's probably something we should uh, look at simplifying. Um, the rest... Uh, I, the rest is, is so easily testable, I'm actually not concerned so much about the changes in burn. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, yeah, I, I actually I, I'm feeling okay about about it going into three nine. Um, I definitely would look at either before, preferably, but maybe after is fine. Um, yeah, doing the refactoring that you talked about to eliminate the duplication. Um, Sean, there were a couple of comments you had on in there about you know in the deutal code I think where. I'm not sure what this does, so this would definitely be a, an area to get our digital expert. That, that's you, Rob. I thought uh, it was Mike. <laughs> that's Mike now. Oh, actually, it is. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Dude, I haven't touched digital so long. That's all about Mike. He is all about digital. He hasn't been around much lately, but he loves that stuff. Um, yeah, true. And, and honestly, he's he's more about what it, what we really need is a unit test on the stir util um, yeah, yeah, using yeah. the new X unit stuff um, and that just beats the crap out of it and that would you know and then we can refactor it appropriately and then it's all good right right to basically force that to get it into that force realic problem yeah which is you know the the scariest part of the memory stuff 
and then we yes. <laughs> then we can reduce the duplicated code, which is just a thing that bothers me as we go forward maintaining yeah. it. That's all. It's like, oh, look, we fixed this bug. Oh, but we didn't fix the secure one. So guess what? The secure one crashes right. <laughs> or something. You know, <laughs> it would just be like, that's what would happen. And then you're like, great. So you mean when I'm being secure, I fail more often? You're like, yeah, sorry, we're bad. <laughs> I, I, that's just my fear. <laughs> it's like, you know, we'll miss it. <laughs> and be like, oh, yeah. man, totally forgot about that. Who uses the secure functions? Oh, right. The only thing that uses them is burn in this one case where you have a hidden variable. Does Wix have any hidden variables? No. So even in our normal use cases, look, we never hit it. And it'd be somebody else that hits it, and it'd be bad. <laughs> anyway, that's sorry. That, that's what runs through my head whenever I see these <laughs> kinds of things. Uh, I don't sleep well at night. I don't know if... No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, these are the kinds of problems that would, you know, make the tech press if we were Microsoft. Um, it'll make the tech press if we're not Microsoft, given the people that use us. So that's why we're well, not. I mean, come on. Eventually. <laughs> we care about these things. We're not just going to. But we also care. That's the other reason. <laughs> Look, this is why we were not the ones that when you signed your stuff, you could ship unsigned or unsecure stuff with signed or binaries or whatever the hell they did with that last MSRC. Could not believe what that thing was about. I just have to write that blog entry. Gosh, I'm talking about not paying attention to security basics. We're talking about this is security 301 or something like that. The itty bitty details. Right. So, um. So I, I guess you know, honestly, I'm inclined to take it if if Sean's willing to stick around and fix it. <laughs> um, yep. You hear? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's a, it, it, it really is. I think the Sean, you've picked a you've picked a big thing. I guess it's easier when people start with small things and then work their way up to big things, because then it's kind of like, oh yeah, this guy's been around for a while. He's done a bunch of stuff. He's kind of got the hang of it. So when you start with a big thing, we're kind of like going, who is this guy? And <laughs> it's like, what are we going to get? And 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 it's not hypothetical. I've had people that come along and say, here, take this, and then they disappear, and you're like. Oh, this is crap. Now what? Now what do we do? Um, so yeah. Um, so yeah. We're we're way over at this point. So I think, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> but uh, this is we do not spend this long on most code reviews. This is a big one. Um, this is this one's harder, I think, than Jacobs is going to be. Um, and his adds more functionality per se. Um, but his doesn't have security in the word as much. That's right. Um, so what, do we take it and see how it rolls? Um, try to get Mike to come back and, <laughs> and, and or, or answer um, Sean's questions and between the two of them try to sort out a unit test for the stir util. I'm sure Mike would love to have that happen. That would be, that would be kind of cool to have Regardless, and we well, do have some. Although I think they're all they're all the old. You only did X unit in four, right? No, it's back there in three. Oh, well then. Oh yeah, sure enough. Because we actually have the start of some stir util tests. That's right. So, and I, I just I bring up Mike because he's done more of them, so he, he's kind of more on the the front edge of it than I am. Yeah. Well, I I I picked you because. You know, this is this is the low level stuff. It's the memutal and the sterutal yes. that's been around since you know, 1999. Yeah, which is why some of it looks kind of ugly. Yeah. Really? You wrote code like that? I'm like, I did when I was right out of college. <laughs> I, I learned a few things in 15 years. Yes, and I've I've tweaked it over times without breaking things. Yeah. Anyway, um, so that yes. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I would be okay if, if we – I would like both of us to review it um, just because it's touching lots of stuff. Um, and then I'd be okay if we took that and then, you know, did some refactoring after the fact. Okay. Um, um, you can pronounce on the, the separate interface. I, I, I dislike it. But I also don't know enough about marshalling and common interop to know if they're what 
a better solution might be. Yeah, no, I need to go look. And, and I didn't do most of that. That actually, I think Heath did most of that calm stuff. And so I, it's, uh, I, I Based on what Sean said a few times, I, I must be oversimplifying something based on his comments, which is usually when I'm like, why can't it just be this? Why can't it just be that? And people keep going, no, no. It's like either I'm oversimplifying or I know something on the other side that makes it all okay. And, and I don't yeah. know which case this is at this point. It's, I'm probably oversimplified the problem, <laughs> which is, you know, that's, that's one of the easiest ways for me to be wrong. <laughs> why? Well, that should be easy. Oh, yeah, no, I was wrong. That's really hard. Sorry. My bad. Um, so, all right. So... Okay, so we're probably going to take this. Now, this is one of those things. This might be a one that would be interesting if we could find a way to pull it. Oh, there's no way we pull this over after the fact. Because we're going to lose the history on this if we put it in and then move to GitHub. Oh, yeah, true. At least the immediate history. I mean, you know, we'll always be able to look back at it, but... yeah. I think what that means is it's harder for us to rip it out if it ends up going haywire. That's probably the, the that's actually probably the biggest problem. But if Sean's going to be around, then we won't rip it out. We'll just keep fixing it, right, Sean? Right. Right. Okay. So, that works. So yeah, honestly, with that, I'm kind of like, yeah, okay, then 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 let's let's we're, we're basically saying let's trust in Sean. He's going to be around, and we're going to make this thing awesome. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. No pressure. <laughs> uh, look, look. I, I mean. <laughs> Sean, what you're seeing is we're in this transition of trying to get from from sets of developers that have known each other for a long time and have met face to face. Honest, I think all yeah, all of us have met face to face more than yeah, more than a handful of times, and to a set of places where we're trying to get newer people that have not met the face to face. We've been trying to get to a place where we could do that. This meeting, I think, has been helping a lot. Um, and so we're trying to build up, it's kind of the trust both ways and the whole long-term commitment stuff and all that kind of stuff. And that's where we're trying to get to. And you've jumped in the middle of it in the deep end here. Um, your changes, Jacob's changes. And honestly, Bruce has been right on the edge of me keep pushing back on him trying to come up with a very <laughs> simple change to a bug that just does not feel right to me that keeps scaring the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> And so you guys are all kind of on the edge where, you know, at some point I'm like, yeah, you know what, they're going to do it. Let's go forward and they'll fix the issues from here. And I'm going to be sad if you guys all disappear and be like, nah, I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> it means I inherited a lot of code and nobody to hang out with except Bob, which is just all right. But Go on. <laughs> Bob can be a little surly occasionally. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and there's more code here than two of us will maintain for a long time. So um, let's do it. Let, let's go through. Um, and I'm inclined. I think what we're going to do on this one is um, we'll, we'll go through. If we see anything really bad, we'll, we'll deal with it. But I'm inclined to take it as is with a whole bunch of probably uh, style things. So if you could... Sean, think about you know leaving a block of time to follow up on the style nits that we might come up with. We'll take it and then we can follow up with style nits. Does that sound reasonable? Okay, I'm um, going to be out of the country starting next Thursday for two no, weeks. No, no, no. Uh, no so. This is this is not a you know you and you must be available for 24/7 at all. This is a you know in the next couple months <laughs> kind of thing. You know this is not an immediate certainly, but I do Although appreciate. Although we do it. we do have pager duty, so no. no. <laughs> No, no, not, I don't even have page duty on the website right now, although we might be getting close to it. So uh, that would be me and the guys here. So anyway, we'll call that good. All right, so there we go. That was a long call, but I think this is probably the way we're going to get through these, these really core um, pull requests until until you guys cross over that point at which we're like, yeah, yeah, you know. Sean or Bruce or Jacob or whoever the next person has been around long enough that we're like, yeah, yeah, okay, we understand what they're doing, and they'll be here, you know, in the, over the next, you know, years that we'll be able to maintain it or whatever, you know. Yeah, they're going to be here for a long-term kind of thing. Then we'll be like, okay, I see what you're doing. This is cool. Let's take this, and let's move forward to the next thing. Uh, most changes are not this hard. It's just the first ones, which is really unfortunate because it's really hard to get people – sometimes it's hard to get people to keep going. <laughs> Because they're like, oh, it's really hard to get the change. I'm like, well, only the first ones, and then it gets easier. I, I climbed that mountain. I'm done. 
Yeah, exactly. So, anyway, so. All right, let's roll with that. And with that issue, I think we're going to get this thing off the docket, which means we just need to get hold of Jacob now um, and do his. And then Heath's, I think, are okay, which will clear our list, right? Yep. All right, cool. So we're on target to, to do this then. Can I get back to the points? Right, I'll just click on the link. Boom. Yes, so Jacob's is the next big thing. Cool. Well, this is very exciting. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I actually had fun. Sean, was that all right? Yeah. I was actually hoping we could maybe do some code stuff during these meetings. So was this was this the kind of code stuff you're thinking of? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. So I, I didn't know if you were like, yeah, I, I just want to sit here and watch Rob type on the screen, which I, I didn't think was what you meant, but I, I've actually, you know, I've, I have actually done that in the past. Um, well, I guess I was kind of talking about, you know, you guys know the code very well, so... Sometimes it helps for people that know the code very well to go through it. All right, yeah, so, so so if you want that to happen, come up with a more specific request, and we can make that happen. Okay? So don't just say, I'd like to go walk through some code. Come, come say, find a function, or so, like, like really small, because I have to be prepared to be able to walk through it. I'm not going to, because for me to go find something is going to take a lot more effort for you than for you to go, I really want to know about this, and then we can talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and so, that's really why I haven't said anything before because I don't, I'm not sure about what to ask about. Well, <laughs> seems like you could go point at anything at that point and go, this thing, I have no idea what that does, right? And if you tell me you don't understand what plus plus I means, then we're going to have a conversation. But yeah. I'm pretty sure if you, <laughs> that's not what you're going to ask about, you know. You could find anything in there and go with it. Honestly, you could have picked the the stir alec um, formatted thing, and we could have talked about that thing, for example. That'd be kind of cool. I mean, we could also do this as a in, we could do this against like pull requests, like we did today, or just you know, yeah, let's let's talk a little bit about you know burn engine internals or something. Yeah, yeah my problem is like the I'm totally fine talking about pull requests. The talking about the burn engine internals requires too much prep. So I much I I would much rather someone say. This block of code, I'd like to talk about it, and then because yeah, so, because then on the fly we can get into the internals, and it won't be as well structured. But I just don't have time to do structure. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't have time yeah. to I don't have time to present a present a lecture. Right, if you right, want to sit around over beer and or yeah, on the phone, virtual. You bring your own beer, um, and, and wander through code. I, I we could totally do that. Yeah, and yeah, and sorry, I, I didn't mean to imply like the, the entire engine, because you're right. I think it has to be a lot more focused. Yeah. And honestly, you know, you'll get to see me going, oh, yeah, I forgot. Why do we do this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only there were a whip. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, no, well, yeah. There'll be some things that won't be in a whip. You'll be like, oh, this line of code. What does it do that for? So anyway, if you have specific things that you'd want to talk about, pick a function. And that means, you know, anywhere. Or, you know, a couple functions, you know, or whatever. Or a function high enough, you know, or whatever. Then we could do that. Does that sound reasonable? Obviously not for the next two weeks because you're going to be gone. Yeah. All right. Um, and yeah, feel free. When I ask for agenda items for the week, feel free to say, this function would be great if we could go into that. And I'll go back to, all right, cool, add it to the agenda. Or I'll be like, not this week, week after. You know, and we'll be able to do that. All right. Okay. Cool. On that note, I'm going to kick Sean off this thing. No, I'm just going to mute him. Um, and we're going to call this meeting done. There will not be one next week because I'm going to be, unfortunately, out of town. Um, and. So next week we're out. The week after that we'll be back on and hopefully moving towards um, the whole thing with GitHub and all that. So uh, in the meantime, I guess you guys have fun coding and all that kind of stuff. Thanks for hanging out for two hours. Yeah, this is our first two-hour meeting, I think. Yeah, wow. That wasn't spent doing bugs for the bulk of it. Right. <laughs> we honestly only spent, I think, 20 minutes doing bugs. Um, so I think... We're good to go. Yes? Yes? I think so. All right. Well, you guys have a wonderful day, evening, whatever. And this was the Wix Online meeting number 19. Uh, we'll see you guys in two weeks. Later. <laughs>